Well, it's time to get a business update now. And for that, Kate Moody joins me. Hi, Kate. Hi, Olivia. So the, the United States and France have finally reached a deal on taxing digital giants. That was one of the many issues being discussed at the G7 summit. Absolutely. France's attempt to push through its own legislation had sparked a feud between the traditional allies, uh, including those threats of U.S. tariffs on French wine imports. Uh, now, the, France was planning to tax 3% of the digital turnover of tech companies like Google, Apple, Amazon and Facebook. Uh, that's the so-called GAFA group. The Trump administration had said the law discriminates against American businesses and threatened retaliation, notably those tariffs. Well, at a joint press conference with Donald Trump, Emmanuel Macron said they'd hit upon a solution to calm those tensions and pave the way to a broader international framework for taxing large tech corporations. France will go ahead with its own bill, but will issue a tax credit of sorts. So the companies that pay the French levy now will see a deduction from their bill under the international law. Take a listen. France does not want to enforce its own tax. What we want, as some of you heard a few months ago, is to sort out the problem on an international scale. I think we've made progress because we have both underscored the fact that we are going to implement a solution to modernize international tax rules in 2020 within the framework of the OECD. What's important today is that we have found an agreement that is good for us both, that will allow us to resolve international situations that are extremely negative and that we can begin to modernize the international fiscal system together. Well, meanwhile, the brewing trade war between the world's two largest economies was also in the spotlight in Biarritz, although China, of course, isn't actually a member of the G7. The tit-for-tat tariffs have contributed to fears of a global recession, and the past week has seen threats of still further escalation after Washington labeled Beijing a currency manipulator earlier this month. Now, though, President Trump says negotiations are back on the table, although his Chinese counterparts have yet to confirm such an offer. Charlie James has the latest. After a weekend of escalation, Donald Trump claims trade talks between the U.S. and China will start back up sooner than expected. From the G7 summit, the U.S. president said Chinese officials are prepared to negotiate. Well, we've gotten two calls and very, very good calls, very productive calls. Uh, they mean business. They want to be able to make a deal. It's very important. Uh, we were called and we're going to start very shortly to uh, negotiate. We'll see what happens, but I think we're going to make a deal. But back in Beijing, China's foreign ministry spokesman said he's heard nothing about a phone call. However, he did have some strong criticism of Washington. We expressed firm opposition to the flagrant trade bullying and extreme pressure by the U.S. It is totally unacceptable. I want to remind the U.S. side again that threats and intimidation do not work on China. Real or not, Trump's phone call claim follows a tense few days of tariff piling. Friday, China announced new retaliatory tariffs on $75 billion worth of U.S. goods. This prompted a tweet from Trump on Saturday declaring duties on Chinese imports will increase even more than expected starting September 1st. Then Sunday, Trump remarked he had second thoughts about the trade war. I have second thoughts about everything. But the White House clarified that he only regrets not raising the tariffs higher. The trade war's twists and turns have taken a toll on markets and contributed to a global economic slowdown. Both sides face pressure to end the war, but neither seems willing to blink first. Well, the prospect of an olive branch there has given a boost to the stock markets, which have had a rocky month of August. After steep drops on Friday, Wall Street is rising this Monday. Uh, the Dow Jones up about 200 points earlier on uh, with less than an hour to go. The Nasdaq up nearly 1% there. A closely watched volatility index or a gauge of investor concern has been rising steadily for about four weeks. Earlier, it was a mixed close for the major European indices. Investors there still hoping for a trade truce. Uh, the DAX up about four tenths of 1%, despite a survey showing German business morale was dropping in August. The FTSE 100 closed for a British bank holiday. Greece is turning another page on its decade of bailout crises by finally lifting capital controls. In June 2015, banks were briefly shut down and Greeks could only withdraw 60 euros cash per day in an effort to keep lenders stable. Since then, many restrictions have been eased, although limits on international money transfers remain. The new Conservative government is anxious to improve Greece's credit rating and attract more international investment, 
and said that all controls would formally expire on September the 1st. Working in conjunction with the Central Bank of Greece, we're now restoring complete normality to capital movements. From today, capital controls are a thing of the past. Kenya has exported crude oil for the first time on a cargo ship bound for Malaysia. The 200,000 barrels were sold for about $12 million in a deal brokered by a Chinese state-owned firm, ChemChina. Kenya has searched for oil for decades, but only found a commercially viable oil field in 2012. The government has vowed to share some of the profits from future shipments with local communities in Turkana, the impoverished northern region where the oil fields were discovered. We will ensure that Kenya's natural resources are utilized in a manner that yields maximum dividends today, but without compromising the interests of future generations. A supermarket in western France is facing a backlash after opening its doors for business on Sunday without any cashiers. The Géant Casino store in Angers only used self-checkouts for several hours, sparking protests. Selena Sykes explains. Barricades made of trolleys and protesters marching down the aisles. This supermarket in Angers in the west of France was open for business on Sunday afternoon using only self-checkouts. After 12.30, just four security guards and three shop assistants were present to supervise the self-checkout service in Gion Casino, a decision that encourages excessive consumption and attacks workers' rights, say protesters. A better world doesn't mean consuming non-stop, Monday to Sunday. It's a symbol of the move towards extreme consumerism. For many shoppers, however, the extended Sunday opening hours are a much welcome change. It's just a shop that opens like on any other day. They're open on Sundays in many countries. In the US, shops are open 24-7. It's convenient. Most shops remain shut on Sunday in France, though there are some exceptions. Supermarket employees can work for a limited amount of time on Sundays, a rule that supermarket management argues is being respected. We respect our employees' time off on Sundays because they're crucial to business during the rest of the week. So we're adapting by asking external companies to work Sunday afternoon. The supermarket hopes its extended opening hours will see revenue increase by 6%. Protesters, meanwhile, have vowed to voice their opposition again next Sunday. Mercy in the French labour market. Indeed, I'm very impressed that they went to protest and not pick up a few free items. <laughs> Thank you very much for that business update, Kate Moody.